pain and river that flows all through this country from coast to coast through every city through every town it is 1 44 a.m october 17th and i'm headed out to start to do this documentary on the homeless um yeah i don't know where i'm quite going at this moment but i will keep you tuned thank you uh, uh, i travel by choice um i don't like to lean on my friends i don't drink i don't do drugs i don't gamble i'm a man of strong faith um let's see this all started when I lost my son about, uh, well, no, that's not quite true. This all started when my family left me behind in Montana about eight years ago. And I was on and off the road. And about three years ago, I lost my son. Uh, he suicided in a junior prison. And I kind of fell out and decided I didn't want anything to do with society anymore. Um, and where I'm at now, I picked up a great job down in the Harrisburg area, um, and that's where I'm going. I don't start till a week from today. Um, I've been blessed with every, just about everything I need to make the job happen and to climb back into normal life. Um, let's see. Uh, the only thing I'm missing at this point is an actual place to stay, and I will not do shelters. Shelters, generally, what's in them on the men's side, there's child molesters, rapists, thieves, bed bugs, people that treat us like we're inhuman. So, so anybody who's been out for a while does not like shelters for those reasons. Um, let's see, what else which one? I'm from Montana originally. Um, and a life on the road is not what most people think it is. For the older people that are out there, generally we don't drink or do drugs. And it's very, very hard to get out of being homeless without a little bit of help. Actually, without a lot of help. Um, and I've had some people that wanted to help along the way, but they were so, I'm going to use the term gung-ho about what they were doing, it was scary. Um, it kind of put me in mind of, why are you doing this? Why are you so, so hell-bent on, on saving me? When in all actuality, I don't need to be saved. I need a hand up, not a, not a hand out. Um, and personally, right now, at this point in my life, things are going very, very well. Um, but this is all very new. And and for myself, I'm, I'm a little uh, 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 scared, and it's very daunting to be climbing back into normal society. There's a lot of things about normal society I do not like, and a, a big part of it nowadays is the falseness. I don't like the uh, addiction to electronics. America right now is very much addicted to electronics, and I see it every day. Um, and the misconceptions about homeless. Not all of us are drug addicted or alcohol addicted or, or whatever people think. Um, a lot of us have some pretty serious depression issues. Um, and we have issues dealing with other people because other people don't understand us. They don't understand where we are in life. So they make false judgments and, and um, wrong judgments. Well, I'm sitting outside of a place where um, people come in Plaza. It's 8.43. I slept here overnight. I was here ever since 9.08. So, at 9, it'll be 12 hours I've been staying here. Um, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go and see if um, people would like to be a part of this movie and to give anything of their heart desire. And what I'm going to do is use that money to put in my gas tank so I can go to the next place where there will be homeless people. Right now I have no money on me, but I have so much money coming towards me, I can feel it. City of New York, or the state of New York, should help us because we're, we're more 
less misery. And uh, I think that they should uh, supply some kind of assistance to us. We should have more uh, communication between the homeless and uh, the general public. And I believe that uh, we need help. I know I do. I am a Vietnam vet. Can we get a little love from somebody once in a while? Yes. Can we get some kind of help? You know, I don't care about help. I just want a little love. That is help. I lost my job. My wife died, my two kids died, and there's one thing we do, want people to know. We are real people. Uh, basically, uh, around 18 years old, I had a problem with probation and I ended up out on the street. I just wish the, uh, more help for a lot of people, you know, that don't really have the guidance, no matter what category they're in, no matter what criteria got them to where they're at, you know, everybody needs individual help, and it's hard to do that because there is so many people, and, you know, maybe more volunteers, maybe something, and a lot of people would understand and know how to research in order to help everybody individually. I promise, you gotta live for what you want today, and today only. Get what you can, get what you need, and keep it moving. Do not dwell on the past. Let it go. It's not worth it. This earth was made to grow. Therefore, trees grow, water flow, everything else in between. If you want it, you gotta get it. If you don't, trust me, it's not gonna fall in your lap. Make it happen. You only got one ticket. Enjoy the ride. On it. Some type of communication that people can see call a number to get some help and actually get help, not get a runaround story, have to go five different places to try to get some help, and then not get any help. There's a lot of runaround with homeless people. They just send you to the next place. You get there, there's no space, send you to the next place. You know, it's very, it's very tough for the homeless. There's not that many programs, like I said, to help out. And that's pretty much my story. They have recently got some form of uh, subsidized housing. It took me 20 years. Hi, my name is Alia, and I am 25. And how I feel about the homeless is, it's sad just to see so many homeless people and their circumstances and what they go through and stuff every day. I'm not homeless, but I, I've been there before and I know how it feels for people that's out there that's homeless and I feel as though like instead of people like making like businesses or like investments they should like try to make like more shelters for people especially victims of like domestic violence and people with children and stuff like that I think they should help like New York City should help them more that's just how I feel their fault because they may have made decisions in life that put them there but at the same time I feel they should get help and there should be more programs that help them to get them out of that situation that they're in and back to society. Hi my name is Tanasia. Um, I think one thing that New Yorkers could do to help homeless people is just stop so much, I don't want to say so much competition, but since everybody's fighting for the same dollar, a lot of family members go against family members. They want, don't want to help out other family members because it's hard for them to live too. I just think that all together is really, really hard to live here. It's either you're really, really rich or really, really poor here. Not really, really poor, but middle class is still poor. I mean, you really only have enough to survive. So maybe it could be like a little bit more benefits for people you know, we do have something, and if not, maybe just some more, you know, programs to help us. Hello, my name is Jack O'Hara, and uh, the thing I have to say is that uh, 
I came back to New York from California in 1982, and that was just about, I think, when Ronald Reagan uh, basically eliminated all the funding for mental hospitals across the whole country. And as a result of that, I saw an absolute influx of ill people on the street. People who couldn't take care of themselves, people who had no one to take care of them. And it was just a very obvious, very sudden and uh, extreme change in our social life here in New York City. And uh, I had lived in New York many years prior to that, uh, off and on, and I never noticed it like it became starting my Hey, I've been living out my car. So, I've been homeless while I'm shooting the homeless movie. I've been living on my car. I'm determined to do whatever I have to do to make my movement go. I've been living on my car, see? A tab of how I've been able to get through the day. My books, my laptop, everything. Hello, my name is Micheline Ross, and I have been homeless for five months. Up until two years ago, I was living with a friend of mine, trying to help him pay rent and trying to job search. And I was homeless before that for two years. Um, basically because I haven't had a job. I think that the government should um, help out homeless people in a lot of ways with Homeless shelters letting their residents be able to work any time of day or night. Some shelters, they won't let you work past a certain hour. It's like, I'm getting ready to have another baby. I may have to move to a shelter, waiting on the waiting list for a based on income apartment. But I'm praying and staying hopeful about everything I need to do to get a place to stay. Okay, thank you, and pray for me. My name is Daniel, and I'm homeless, and I've been homeless for 25 years. And the, the reason why I've been out there in the streets with no place to sleep, without a home, is because when I stay in Decatur, it's been rough for me, and I haven't had no one to help me as far as you know, housing with, with, with the mortgage and, and the bills that need to be paid. And the people that I stayed around with for at the taxpayers and stuff like that who's going to help us to keep our home together really just abandoned us and they put us out on the streets. So, you know, it's kind of rough being homes out here with nobody out there to help you. And the only, only thing it is is just that they putting you outside, you know, and leaving you out there to be homeless. So it's kind of rough being homeless. My name is Tracy, and I'm homeless with a 15-year-old. The reason I'm homeless is because my husband got hooked on meth. He shot me in the head for 25 and beat our son so bad. So he can't move his left side. And the reason we're homeless is because he's a cop in Virginia. And when we go to shelters, he comes and gets us. I would like for society or the government to have better laws to protect people lightly from the police. And instead of building buildings that are no good, to build more shelters. In Atlanta, there's only three women's shelters and seven men's shelters. And I think that's wrong. Because me and my son live in an abandoned building. And I just think it should be better for women. What it's like to be homeless and how I came to the uh, state of being homeless. First of all, I started uh, doing drugs and drinking alcohol and it got to the point where that overtook everything. Instead of paying bills and 
being responsible, I would smoke and drink my money with. And the first time I became homeless was in Philadelphia. And I actually laid out in the woods and on the streets. And it wasn't a pleasant feeling, but at the same time, I didn't want to change. A real childhood coming up. Being homeless is something I've, I've been there before. It's like I've, I lost the desire to do, to, do, to do good things for myself because I was so depressed for a lot of years. And so homelessness, homelessness has been embraced me in a way that it's like a world in itself. You know, you, you change your whole lifestyle about life. How you see people. And um, I come to realize that uh, day by day, I can make it because I have the good doctors that accept me get my keep my mind somewhat stable a little bit. I have um, healthcare doctors. Ladies and gentlemen, you are now with Kaylee Campbell right here in the park. Greatest films of all time. One of the greatest documents of all times. You need to come and see this film. Kaylee Campbell. It's a river of pain. Don't let me Well, it started with the welfare and benefits and the school lunch program for all our kids. Now the senior citizen with no place to sleep. It's a river of pain, cause what and and I'm homeless and uh, I got into this situation because of the economy you know um, Susie said that a lot of times homeless homeless people are homeless because of drugs and alcohol that's not necessarily true uh, the economy sometimes has a lot to do with it. I mean, I grew up in middle class and then all of a sudden I became part of lower class and now I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit below the, the poverty level. Most of us can't get out of this situation like we would like to. Um, and I'm not saying that the, the government is responsible for any of us, but I think that they have a duty to help they're the citizens that vote for them, regardless of if they're in a home or homeless. There's there's just not enough uh, organizations like Inspiration or others because of lack of funding. There's a, a hidden age discrimination out there. I mean, I'm 50 years old, you know, but if I go out there to look for work, they're saying I'm too old. And yet I still have 17 more years before I can retire legally. You know, so all of a sudden I'm too old or I'm too educated. So everything is about, you know, companies just, you know, don't, don't want to hire because they, they're afraid that they have to pay me what I'm worth. I mean, just because I have an education doesn't mean I, I want what I'm, I'm worth. I, I need a job. I need to get out of the situation that I'm in. And I can't get out if, I'm, if I can't get hired. And I've been in, I hope to be involved with it for quite some time. I got some great volunteers, and they love working down here too, as you will see. We um, try to clothe everybody that we can. We also have toys for the kids, we have books for the kids, we have um, bedding, mattresses. And anything that you need for everybody else. Um, just come in and see us. And I spent 27 years homeless on the street, homeless at 8 years old, and I had to overcome a lot of hurdles and obstacles to get where I'm at today. I was a drug addict, alcoholic. I had an abusive father. I had to overcome that, the hate. I had to transition to that to love. And I'm so glad I had a mother that was very religious that took, used to take me to Sunday school and church. And she taught me about Jesus and she gave me my spiritual background and my faith. And I was a mustard seed at the beginning, but I put it on the back burner. And I lived a wicked life living in the street 27 years being homeless. Homeless people as human beings too. They smell us, but they don't see us. And I've been tortured in the street 
put down in the street, and people betted that I wouldn't live long. But so, oh, the Lord has the last laugh, so overcoming all my hurdles and obstacles, I'm from a large family, and my sisters and brothers are still overcoming the abuse of my father. But I did one thing in life that was so wonderful and so beautiful, I had to forgive my father before he died. And the transition into nothing but love. And I got my eyes open like I was in the Garden of Eve. And the Lord carried me through that trial and tribulation of bearing my, bearing my cross in such a way. And I'm so grateful for that. But being at the West Side Capital Center, I'm helping people like Ken. The people that come in these doors is my reflection. That's my mirror. And I always going to remember my pain and suffering. And I'm going to stay humble because it humbled me in life in such a way. It shaped my demeanor and made me who I am today. My nickname is called Dog Man because I lived in the street with 11 homeless dogs. And the Cleveland police officer that believed in me and said, one day you overcome your hurdles and obstacles, you'll stand again from quicksand to solid foundation. He was right. My name is Clinton Marone. I'm a recovering alcoholic and an addict. And my story is the West Side Captain Center saved my life. You know, um, I was saying in 1998, I was homeless on the streets. I left a well-to-do home come downtown Cleveland, smoke crack cocaine. And since then I've recovered. I've been recovering alcoholic and an addict. It took me a number of years to get to a point where I wanted to change my life, get off of the streets, do something different to help other people. Being homeless has proven to me that everybody is not self-sufficient. You cannot always live on the streets. People want to pick you up and people want to put you down. You know, these people helped pick me up and brought me to a life that I could better understand myself and better understand and help other people. Counselor here, and uh, what I do is my goal is to get people into treatment. So I do their assessments, drug and alcohol assessments. I uh, find the appropriate level of care, which could be anywhere from a simple education program up to a non-medical, thirty-day residential treatment program. 90% of my clients are referred by the court. So in other words, they might be first-time DUI offenders, they might be people who are on parole and they tested positive for some drug or alcohol, and so they are referred to me by the parole board for an assessment, or usually Cleveland Municipal Court or Lakewood Court or Rocky River for an assessment. Um, so anyway, most people do not want to go to treatment. Most people don't think they have a problem. Not everybody has a problem. And that's why a lot of times I just recommend education for them. And I've been working in the kitchen for a few years at the Christmas meal. And I generally end up making mashed potatoes. But right now my son's making mashed potatoes. And I made some coleslaw today. And um, I've done some other things. And it's just a, it's a nice way to start our Christmas celebration off. And I try to do what little bit I can to give back when I can. And this opportunity presented myself, presented itself to me a number of years ago and I've just stayed consistent with it. Um, like I said, I do what I can when I can. And I try to give back a little bit here and there. I'm from Los Angeles, California. Uh, I've been living downtown Skid Row for 15 years. I'm homeless, I'm drugs, living here and there. And I decided to come out here to Cleveland, Ohio, and change my change my life. And I was living at 2100 at the shelter, going through um, the madness in, uh, in the shelter, dealing with homelessness. And I had to keep the faith and got my house and stuff like that and changed my life from uh, being homeless. And at one time in my life, I was homeless. Um, in fact, I spent most of my years being homeless, going from house to house, place to place, uh, homes and homes. And it's not fun. It's not really, it's not cool at all. They call life. Thank you, Lord, for the kindness in my heart, the compassion for other people, to love, to treat people the way I would like to be treated with love and respect. Thank you, Lord, for me not putting people down, stereotyping people, giving them unconditional love, unlimited. And, Lord, it's a wonderful, wonderful day above ground to breathe this pollution, this beautiful atmosphere, the thing that people always criticize. And, Lord, I hope everyone in this room always realize 
every day is a holiday. I want you to have a blessed day. Amen. Amen. And I want to thank the volunteers. Here at the City Missions, they help adults and kids that have trauma and abuse in their past relationships and their past lives. They introduce them to a new guidance and a new happy. They are a Christian-based charity. There are many ways for you to help. Reaching hearts and changing lives, transforming with the power of God's love. They always have a need for extra hands. So we always have a need for extra hands. We have 60... Uh, maybe 65 employees, and every day we have volunteers that serve here in different capacities. They have a material gift donation drop-off Monday through Friday, hours 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., also a clothing drop box. They always have their hands open to help. They believe there's always hope. That there's always hope. There's always hope in Christ, and... Um, no one is beyond his reach and so that's why we're here and that's why I hope to um, connect people here at the City Mission because we want um, each and every person who walks through our doors to know that they are not too far from God's grasp of hope for their life. So. Just left two great interviews here at the City Missions. They supply us with so much information. Downtown Cleveland is where you can find them, or you could go on Google and type in The City Missions for more news. It's Kaylin Arrington signing out with WOMS News. Well, it started with welfare and benefits And the school lunch program for all our kids Now the senior citizen with no place to sleep It's a river of pain, cause white and Port Authority It's a river of pain Cause wide and deep There's always been welfare There's always been poor Always been big business To slam the door Without a government To unlock that gate River of pain shall not obey. There's a river of pain, a river that flows all through this country.